So let's go now to the next chapter where we talk about lubricant roles, functions, and failure modes. On a very basic level, a lubricant is made up of two or three different types of components, and they are the base oil, the additives that we add to that base oil to give the properties that we're looking for, and then also, in the case of greases, a thickener. And a thickener is the only difference between an oil and a grease. We've taken a formulated oil, to that we've added a thickener to help it stay in place. That's why we use a grease, because we don't want it to leak out. It may be a situation where uh, a, a machine does frequent starts and stops. So if you have a, a sump under that machine, and it's sitting there and running, and the oil is coating all the parts, and then you have to shut it down, where does the oil go? Gravity takes over, takes it to the bottom. Now you go to start it again, it takes some amount of time for that oil to get back up and cover those components. If you have frequent starts and stops, that adds up. For example, in a vehicle, motor vehicle, something close to half of the wear that your engine will ever experience happens in those few, few seconds of starting and turning the key because of that delay in coating of those surfaces. So if we can minimize that damage, it makes sense. And in some machines where we have the option to use grease versus oil and there's frequent starts and stops, that's part of the reason we, we do that or we see that. In other cases, it's because of the likelihood of leakage. And if we leak out the oil, we could have catastrophic failure. So we pack the grease in there. Um, other times we're going to see grease because it can help keep the contaminants out. But starting the common denominator, one of the common denominators here is the base oil. And the base oil that's either in the oil, formulated oil or the grease can be mineral based, coming from a drum of crude oil. It could be synthetic, <coughs> which is, which is man-made to some degree, which has some specific processing, some specific uh, manufacturing from a small chemical unit that gets grown into the molecule that we need for the performance of that oil. Or it can be bio-based, meaning that it's being de derived typically from seed stocks. Linseed, canola oil, uh, uh, corn oil, soybean oil. Uh, these are some of the sources for these bio-based uh, fluids. And, and in the, within the mineral oils, there are three groups. They are the solvent refined, the more traditional mineral oils that come from crude oil where you have a solvent refining process, uh, which is fairly effective, but there are a, a significant amount of residual products as well as a variety in the size and shapes of the molecules that you end up with. Or it can be processed further a, a, into a process we call hydrocracking until it achieves this group two status, which is an increased purity, an increased cleanliness, and an increased uniformity from the group one. Or we can take it even further, sometimes referred to as a severely hydrocracked, or isomerized, or hydroprocessed fluid that qualifies as a group three. And when you get up to the group twos and especially to the group threes, you get better performance, you get longer life, you get better uh, thermal resistance and, and resistance to oxidation, um, uh, better viscosity index performance and so on, till it almost starts to behave uh, uh, comparably to some of the synthetic products. And so these end up being kind of a cost trade-off uh, between the, the traditional solvent refined mineral oils and the more expensive synthetics. The true synthetics then could be the polyalpha olefins, Okay. also known as a synthetic hydrocarbon because molecularly they're very similar to hydrocarbons, carbons and hydrogens in chains and branches. Uh, and they're <coughs> known as the group four oils. Or you get some other type of synthetics that all get bundled together as what we call group fives. And they could be silicone fluids. It could be um, fluorinated uh, compounds. It could be polyalkylene glycols or esters as examples of what falls into the group five. And then the third category I talked about was the bio-based fluids. And the bio-based fluids, again, coming from seed stocks and so forth, from these plant sources, they also happen to fall into this group five, but they're primarily 
there because of concerns about environmental impact, okay? Maybe biodegradability, maybe uh, toxicity uh, into the environment in which they might leak. Uh, and so there is uh, an increasing focus on the use of some of these products as well, even if they traditionally have somewhat less uh, of a performance uh, profile compared to the synthetics and even to the, some of the mineral oils.